If, uh, if you've got your Bibles this morning, I, uh, I just want to share with you for just a little while uh, something the Lord showed me as I was reading. And uh, let me restate this morning that whatever need that you've got in your heart, whatever need you've got in your life, um, there's not anything that's too hard for God. If you've got a, if you've got a family member that, that needs the Lord and you can't seem to reach them, uh, why not give it over to God whose hand is not short that he cannot say. You know, so, sometimes we, we look at situations and circumstances that come up in our lives and, and, and they're bigger than we are and we wonder, Lord, what am I going to do? How can I handle this? And he said, cast all of your care on me because I care for you. You see, he is, the Bible says, a friend that sticks closer than a brother in the wee hours of the morning when there is no one else that you can get a hold of. There is a God in heaven that is just waiting for you to cry out to him. Uh, he, he loves you. This, none of this is actually a part of what I have in my notes this morning, but I just feel like that you need to know that no matter where you are, no matter what that the devil may be telling you in your life this morning, you are not alone. You're not in this thing by yourself. There is a God that cares about you supremely. If you've got your Bibles, I, I uh, would uh, like you to turn them, please, to the book of Hosea. The book of Hosea, and I, I just want to share a few thoughts with you this morning, Lord being my helper, and then I'll try to get out of the way. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, it says this, So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time. It is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. It is, it is time for us to seek the Lord. It is time for us. I, I looked up this scripture text and I looked up this word fallow and what it means is untended ground. Now, I don't know about the rest of you all, but, but when you've got untended ground, it doesn't take very long until the weeds overtake it. It doesn't take very long until I, if, if you all remember just a few short years ago, out, out back we, we had a swamp, we had cattails, we had thistles and briars and, and thorn trees of all sorts just simply because the ground was left unattended. Nobody did anything with it and it got to the point where you couldn't do anything with it. But I, I wonder this morning if just for a few minutes you, you would give thought to make a, making preparation for God to bless you. That's what I want to speak to you about this morning. Making preparation, breaking up the fallow ground and seeking God until he comes and he begins to, to rain. I, I'm raining, by the way. I, I don't want to, and I, I, I'm just going to try to mind the Lord. May I tell you today, I don't want to sprinkle. I, I mean, I don't want a, a spring shower. I'd like to have a thunderstorm. You know, one of them kind that no matter what you got on when you get in it, you just absolutely get drenched. That's what I want. I want the Lord to rain his righteousness down on me today just like that. You say, well, well, preacher, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get into all of that, you know, stuff. <laughs> you might want to if you're going to go to heaven 
you're going to be surrounded by that stuff. So now, and, and these fellows will try to follow along with me uh, on the screen behind me. But if you would now follow along in 2 Kings chapter 4, and I'm going to be in a few places in the scripture this morning, but, but I want to tell you that if you're seeking the Lord, uh, don't settle for just a little bit. Don't, don't settle for just a little bit. In chapter four, in verse one of 2 Kings, it says this. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet of Elijah saying, thy servant, my husband is dead. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be the bondmen. And Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in thine house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. He said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad, all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. And then he says this. I don't know if you've all ever seen this or not, but I saw it. He said, Borrow not a few. Now watch. When thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shalt pour out into all of those vessels. Thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. She poured out and it came to pass that when the vessels were full, she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said, there ain't no more. All the vessels are full. And the Bible said in the oil stayed. And she came and she told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil, pay the debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. Now, what I want you to understand this morning is if you're asking God to rain down righteousness on you and you've got your friend and family day cards and you're asking God to rain down on your family, may I say to you this morning, don't come with a short expectation the Bible said here, the preacher said, don't just go out and fetch up a couple of vessels, but go out and get every one that you can because when God begins to pour out on you, you're going to need every empty vessel that you can find. You say, preacher, thank you, Lord, for reminding me. You say, preacher, what are you talking about this morning? I'm talking about Cody. Talking about empty vessels. Talking about empty chairs. I'm talking about having an expectation that God can fill up the empty vessels. The preacher said, he told the lady, he said, I want you to go out there. I want you to borrow everything that you can find that will hold the oil. I want you to bring it into the house. And when you bring it into the house, he told them, he said, begin to pour it out. And the Bible said that when it was done, it was sufficient to meet the needs. And not only was it sufficient to meet the need, but it also was an abundant overflowing so that later she would have what she needed. You say, well, preacher, what are you talking about? I begin to think about all of these cards. For those of you that may not know, some time ago we had a service and we put down a name on a card and we put it on a chair and we promised that we would pray until these people got saved. We promised we would pray until God filled up the house. And I put these things in my pulpit so that they might remind me. But then God said to me, it's not you that needs to be reminded, preacher. You tell them to go out and bring in the empty vessels and when they get here, expect an overflowing of the Spirit of God that when they come into the house, that conviction might come, they might understand that they need the Lord and give their hearts to him. But, uh, you know, they went out and they found everything that they can and they brought it in. I think sometimes when we pray to God, I mean, have you all ever prayed to God with, with a low expectation? <laughs> Y'all are looking at me like that preacher's crazy. 
Well, let me tell you what, I don't think until we go out and fetch up the van, you know, cause, cause we're praying and we're saying, God, would you, how many of y'all are praying that God would bless our friend and family day? Put your hand up. Now, don't get aggravated at the preacher, but how many of you all have prayerfully invited something? Now, you don't gotta raise your hand, but here's what I'm telling you. She went to the preacher and she said, preacher, I'm in trouble and I don't know what to do. And the preacher said, go out, fetch up the vessels, bring them in, and then watch what God can do. We'll pray and ask God to bless our friend and family day, and then we want the preacher to invite our family. May I tell you that it's time for us to do. It wasn't the preacher that went out and fetched up the barrels, but he told her, he said, if you'll go do what I ask you to do, God will bless you. We want to see our friend and family saved. I believe we need to do. You say, well, I don't know, preacher, whether or not I'm going to like that. Well, if you don't like that, you ain't going to like this. Just flip your page over, 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. Not only do I believe that if you want God to meet your need, that God expects you, and you say, oh, wait a minute, preacher. I don't have to do nothing for God to bless me. Who told you that? You see, God did. He said, try me, test me, do something, and ask me, and find out if I won't bless you. Not only does God want to fill you up, but I believe sometimes we don't receive healing because we don't do what God told us to do. You see, I'm one of those ones that still believe God's able. How many of y'all believe God's still able to heal? Say, oh, oh, wait a minute, preacher. Does God, does, does God, does God, I don't know, ask him. Hmm. Yeah. Listen, I don't think sometimes we, we look at God and we ask God, but then we don't do. We don't do. In verse one of chapter five, it said, now Naaman, Captain the host, the king of Syria, was a great man with his master honorable because he'd been by him. The Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Bible said the Syrians had gone out by companies that, that brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little girl. <laughs> Where's my card at? You know, you just don't know what God is gonna do with a little girl. You say, preacher, why do you say that? Because she came to me one day and she said, preacher, she said, I want to tell my daddy, except for unless he comes to church and preacher, unless he has a relationship with the Lord, preacher, would you pray with me that I'd be able to tell my daddy that he needs Jesus. And you say, preacher, what is that? There's a little girl here. The Bible said she was in a state of captivity, but she, she knew that Naaman was a leper, and she told them, she said, I would to God, my Lord, he could get to where the preacher is, and the preacher would heal him of his leprosy. She had a lot of confidence in the preacher. May I tell you this morning, don't put your confidence in the preacher. Put your confidence in the one the preacher preaches about. It ain't, it ain't about the preacher, but she was excited. She had, had an opportunity for God to work in Naaman's life, and she said, if I could just get him to where the preacher is, the preacher would say so, and God would begin to move. You all know the story. The Bible said that Naaman traveled and when he got there, he, he went to the wrong man. He went to the king and the king said, who am I? I can't do these things. And the preacher heard about it. And the preacher's like every other preacher. He said, if you just get him here, he'll know that there is a prophet of God in the land. Now listen to me. And this is difficult for me to say this. But I want you to understand, not just in our church, but in every church across our country where there is an anointing anointed man of God that's preaching the gospel. We need to get our lost people to where they are. Because without the preaching of the word of God, they cannot be saved. 
I know I like singing. I enjoyed everything that happened in the service this morning. I enjoy worship and all of those things are good. But I've got to tell you what, it is by the preaching of the word of God that men and women, boys and girls are going to be set free and saved and set on the road to glory. She said, get him to where the preacher is and God can do a great work. The Bible said when he got there, Naaman, he got word that the prophet of God had sent for him and he went there and when he got outside of the prophet's house, the prophet didn't even get up and go out there. He just, he sent a messenger out. He said, you go out there and you tell Naaman that what he needs to do, he needs to go down to the Jordan and he needs to begin to dip and he needs to go down seven times and he'll be healed. The Bible said Naaman got aggravated he said, I at least thought that preacher, he'd come out and see me. I figured that preacher, he would at least take the time out of his schedule to come out and he would wave his hand over me and he'd say a few words and God would heal me and he's telling me I need to go down and get down in a dirty river and dip myself seven times. You know, we want, we want our people to be saved. We want our people to be healed. But now don't you all get aggravated at the preacher. We don't want to be obedient to what the word of God says. Preacher told him, he said, I want you to go. And he said, I want you to dip down in the river when you get there. I don't want you just to dip down one time, but I want you to go down seven. And he got upset and he went his way and his servant thought better of it and began to talk to him and he talked him into going and when he got there, the Bible said as he began to dip, when he went down the seventh time, he came up clean. Let me ask you all a question. How many of you all believe that God will honor your obedience? Uh-oh. Preachers back on that obedience, you bet I am. Because the Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. And if we expect God to move in our lives and God says we need to do, I believe that healing will come when we are obedient to the word of God. Naaman went and he dipped and you all know the story. The Bible says that when he dipped, he became whole. I gotta tell you what, I, I, I believe and I thought about it, and I know that lately it seems like I've talked a lot about Cornerstone, and I know that it seems like lately that it seems like I've talked about the, the fact that when prayer is made in the church, that there is healing that's taken place and that we're seeing people that, that are being healed of whatever infirmity that they got, and everybody says, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? I've got to tell you what, this is not anything new for God. But we look and we expect we expect God to do great things in our family. We expect God to bless our church. We expect God to grow the ministry. We expect God to save people. But the Bible said that it is time for us to seek the Lord. You see, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of, preacher, if you make it easy on me, if, if I just come, if I just come, preacher, on, you know, an occasional Sunday, can I expect God to bless my life? Well, maybe, but if you want him to rain down righteousness on you, the Bible said we need to break up the fallow ground with an expectation that God is going to rain on us. I, I, I got to tell you, I don't know about you. I don't want, I don't want, I did this morning. I told Brother Lucian, I said, you preach hard and have six saved. And then I thought, man, I'm limiting God. Then I said, well, we'll make it an even dozen. It'll be all right. I'd rather have a dozen saved. But I, you know, I, I think about, let me ask you all a question. And, and, and the fellas and the, and the ladies, please, I'm not trying to embarrass them, but I told them last night, I wanted them to get together and, and they had dinner and they just talked about each other. They talked about their hearts. They talked about where the church is. They talked about what their expectations for the church was and where it's been and where it's headed and what God can do. And I, what do you want God to do in your life? You see, because God can do over and above anything that you can expect. So if you've got expectation that God is going to do this and he does this, 
Well, that's okay, but what happens if you got expectation that God is going to do this and God comes along and he blows the top off? Oh, he, wait, God can't, God can't, God can't do that, can he, preacher? I don't know. Let me tell you, the Bible said that there, there was about 120 of them that got together one day and Jesus had told them, he said, you all get together and you just begin to pray and you wait on the promise. But I've got to tell you, when I read the book, I think that the promise was much greater than their expectation. They began to pray and the spirit came. Oh, that was fabulous, by the way. Everybody say, oh, the preacher's done gone off the deep end. Maybe I have. That was a fabulous thing that the Spirit came. It was a fabulous thing that the Bible says that they spake in tongues. The Bible says that others heard that was all fabulous. But let me tell you what the top being blown off was is the Bible said that when Peter stood up to preach the gospel, over 3,000 came in one setting, first message ever, anointed by the Holy Ghost after Pentecost, and over 3,000 people give their heart to the Lord. Our expectation is, God, if you'll save one on friend and family day. God, and, and Brother Eric asked me, he said, Preacher, he said, how many, how many do you think that you're going to have? Well, it depends on how many barrels that we want to go out and fetch up. He told him, borrow not a few. Go get them all. So I told him, I said, well, Brother, I think I'm expecting about 250. But realistically, if we have 200, I guess I'd be happy with that. But then preacher, we might only have 150, just depending, and you know what I was doing? I was lowering down the expectation so that the preacher wouldn't be disappointed, but let me tell you that it's not the preacher, it's God, and my expectation of God is much higher than of me. I thought about this. I don't think that without our obedience to do that God will move as greatly as he can. In John chapter nine, and I need to hurry, how it ever got to be 10 minutes or 12 already, I have no idea. In John chapter nine, you'll find a story there. There was a fellow that was blind. They began to have a conversation about him and when it was all said and done and done and said, the Bible said that Jesus began to talk to him. And when he got done talking to him, the Bible said that he bent down and he, and he spit in the dirt and, and he made a clay and he got up and he put that clay upon the blind, blind man's eyes. And then he said this. He said, I want you to go wash. Now, let me ask you all, if the blind man hadn't went to wash, what do you think would have happened? What was that? He would have remained blind. Uh-oh. Oh, it doesn't negate God's ability to heal because there was others that Jesus touched. There was others that he just spoke a word and they were healed from a distance when he didn't even make it to the house. The, the one young girl was, was all right and come and said, hey, it's okay. I've got to tell you what, God can do what he wants. But in this case, when he touched him, he said, I want you to go and wash. You know what that means? That means if you want God, want God to do the unexpected in your life, you've got to be willing to go where he tells you. How many of y'all got a family member that you, now listen to me, don't get aggravated at the preacher, but how many of y'all have got a family member that's lost that you have not invited to friend and family day yet? Oh. I'm not fussing. I just want you to see the possibility here. The Bible said in Hosea that, that it is time for us to seek the Lord. It's time for us to break up the ground. It's time for us to have an expectation. I, I do not believe, listen to me. I, I do not believe that God is content with the church remaining as we are. Easy question. How many of y'all believe we got a great church? I'm taking notes. Get your hand up, Jim. I didn't see it. That's better. You said, preacher, are you bragging? No, because I think we got a great church, but I don't think we have the church that God wants us to have. 
I believe God wants us to break up the fallow ground. I want God, I want God, I want God to take what we do and honor it and bless it and break it and multiply it to the saving of the souls of our family. But I think sometimes we look and we limit God because God says to do. God says to do. Oh, we will. We will. By the way, this week we'll make phone calls. This week, we'll invite people. This week, we'll have expectation. And then if they don't come, we'll say, well, preacher, I, I know they will. Listen, I'm not, not talking about friend and family day. When you break up the fallow ground and you plant, harvest doesn't always come next weekend. It doesn't always come next month. Sometimes you plant with an expectation that God is going to bless, that God is going to multiply, but that eventually God will move. I want you all to pray for Cody. Let me tell you how God works. I know you, you all got a strange pastor, but you might as well throw Brother Mike under the bus. We were back there in the fellowship hall yesterday and we were working and there were pieces and parts of vacation Bible school, not this past vacation Bible school, but at least the vacation Bible school before that. We still had paper hanging from the ceiling. I'd have told my deacon, I said, man, I said, Mike, I said, that's driving me nuts. We've got to get that paper off of the ceiling. It looks horrible. Mike clumb up a ladder and he reluctantly agreed. He said, preacher, I know it's got to go. He, he said, but every time that I look at this paper, it is a reminder to me to pray for Cody. That was yesterday. That was yesterday. Not this morning. After what, Vanessa? That was yesterday. When God said, I've not forgotten him. When God said, do what I told you, preacher. When God said, do what I told you, deacon. There's somebody that is dependent upon our church. We cannot quit. We cannot let down. We've got to do. The Bible said it is time to break up the fallow ground and seek the Lord until he rains down right. I'm telling you, I want the spirit of God to be so strong in this place that when the lost people come into the house of God that they can already, when the, when the singers sing, when the offering is taken up, when they're shaken, I want there to be such a conviction in the church that the lost people, the Bible said that a sinner cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous. How are we gonna get that? How are we gonna to get to a place, preacher, where the church is such that when the lost people come, they've either gotta to run to the altar or run out of the church? How are we gonna get righteous like that, preacher? We're gonna break up the fallow ground and we're gonna seek God until he rains that kind of righteousness down on the church. Because I gotta tell you, that's what we're gonna need in these end days. I look at everything and, and I gotta tell you, there are people every day they wake up with the expectation that life is going to go on and on and on and on and on, not ever realizing that when they leave home that day, they'll not return that night. I'm telling you, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, everything changes. And yet, while we have opportunity, we need to break up the fallow ground. We need to do what God would have us to do. And so, let me, let me go on because I think that there is no vision that can come unless, again, we are obedient to the Lord. Now, church, listen to your pastor. Because in the book of Joel, it says this. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. I do not believe that there can be reconciliation until there is repentance. You see, it was customary for them to rend their garments. That thing that was on the outside that everybody could see, it was customary for them to say, I'm having a woeful time, but God said, I'm not interested on what you're doing on the outside. It's what's on the inside that makes a difference. 
And you see, this preacher can't look at your heart this morning and know what's going on on the inside of you. I can look at the outside and I can see your emotions, but may I tell you, emotions do not tell the whole story. I've looked at people before and I've seen them smile at me as I shook their hand and yet as they were smiling at me in their spirit, I could tell that they were absolutely broken. Emotions do not tell the whole story. God said to rend your heart, not your garment. God said it is with your whole heart that you are to seek me. You see, turn ye even to me with your whole heart, all of your heart, all of who you are. Reconciliation does not come without repentance and we cannot repent until we rend our heart and say, God, look deep inside of me. If we're going to become a church that when these people come, when wow, I have Oscar, Sean, Pam, Jamie, Brian, Nick, Patsy, Lori, Bill, Anthony, Krista, Taylor, and Jeff. That's just one card. That's just one card. I have Brett. I want you all to understand. I didn't sort these things out. I'm just picking them up as God showed them to me. I have Larry Jr. I have Marissa. I have Rob and Mary, Tyler, Natalie and Ashley, Junior and Susie, Phil, Corey, Lee, Brandy and family. That's just on one card. That's just on one card. But we put them in the pulpit and they soon become forgotten. God said, God said, with your whole heart, seek me, break up your fallow ground. Seek me until I reign, till I reign, till I reign righteousness down upon you. One more, and then I'll quit. Revelation chapter 7. There's been much said about Revelation this morning, much sung. One of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence come they? I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. He said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. I also believe today, we ask God to do a lot of things, but there'll be no entrance into the kingdom of glory without the cleansing of the blood of Christ. There's no other way to get there. You see, you can can come Sunday after Sunday after Sunday to church and you can tell me, preacher, I believe in God. But my question is, today is have you sought him have you broke up your fallow ground of your heart so that God can work there and are you now seeking him until he rains righteousness down upon your heart upon your spirit upon your family and upon your church you see there be no entrance no matter I was talking with somebody earlier And I I told them that for me, it's not about a denomination. It's not about a theology. It's not about a doctrine, except one. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter in to the kingdom of God. Except that we are washed in the blood, cleansed, from our unrighteousness, 
there is no hope for heaven. Except that Christ is our Savior. And we serve him. Not just on Sundays. But with our whole heart. Seeking him. Saying God. I'm empty. He said what do you have in your house. Bring me all that you've got. And I'll fill it up abundantly. Obedience. We need in our lives. And church I. I preached this message to you this morning, partly because Friend and Family Day is next week, but also because I believe that both in your lives individually and in the church collectively, that it is a time when we need to prepare for God to pour out his blessing upon the church. Now, I'm not, I'm not, now listen to me. I'm not just talking about feeling good. Because we can have a great service, we can feel good, we can worship the Lord. But for me, when the 3,000 got saved on the day of Pentecost, that was the greatest miracle that occurred that day. When later 5,000 came, and then it got to the point where the Bible said, then the Lord added daily unto the church such as should be saved. That to me, you see, that to me is the greatest of miracles. I, I want all of the other things. But I think that it is time for us to seek the Lord on behalf of our families, on behalf of our neighbors, on behalf of our country, that God might send great revival before the end. Before the end. So I ask you today as you bow your heads, I, I, I want to, I want you to know I, I am not, I, I, I am not fussing at anybody. That's not the intent of the message. But I believe that God wants to use you mightily to make a difference in your families. But that happens when the prophet said that it is time, it is time for you to seek the Lord until he rains down righteousness upon you. Breaking up the fallow ground and expecting, expecting God to saturate what you have done with his spirit and give a harvest so great that you cannot contain it. So I wonder, first let me speak to those of you that are here that are saved. Do you have a desire this morning to be used? What is prepping your heart? I want you to ask yourself, what's lacking? What's lacking? Now let me ask you this morning, and I don't know every heart that's here, but if you're here today and you're not saved, not saved, you don't know the Lord, you, you don't enjoy His peace like I do, you don't experience his presence like I do. At this point, there, there's been no repentance. There's been no name written down in the Lamb's book of life. You know today that if something happened, heaven would not be your home. But you'd like this church to pray for you. I'm going to ask you, while every head is bowed, nobody's looking around. Would you be honest before the Lord? If you're not sure heaven would be your home, would you slip your hand up and take it down? We'll know to pray for you. Is there anybody through the building, unsaved, unsure, uncertain, slip it up and take it down by that? Say, preacher, I'm not sure if I'd make heaven or not. Would you pray that God would speak to my heart? Would you lift it up and take it down, by the way? God bless you. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Hands have been up all over the building. And as Brother Kyle sings, whatever need that you've got, maybe where he said it's time for you to seek the Lord, you'd like to just come talk to him that he might rain down righteousness upon you. I'd like you to come and pray. Those that raised up their hand, whatever need you have, I'd like you to come and pray. For the one that raised up their hand said, Preacher, I don't know. I don't know. If 
if I'm saved or not. You can know today. And I'm going to ask you as well. Just get up out of your seat. Come talk to God. As we stand to our feet, God bless your heart, young man.
there's 50 or better of them cards on them altars. Ah, uh, and for him to slide that one over and it to be her person, it's amazing. May the Lord bless your efforts this week. Please prayerfully, prayerfully ask God to bless our services, our efforts. Ask him please to anoint the altars and to save our families. I believe with my whole heart that we're living in the closing out of time. We need to be serious about seeking God and asking him to move mightily. We'll do that. He will because he said that he would. May the Lord bless you and keep you to our visitors. We are most glad that you are here. You are dismissed.